<laughs> if you clicked on this video because of the obnoxious thumbnail, no, the Steam Deck has not been killed, but the Razer Edge is a really interesting conversation. The ultimate goal is not to be a brand or platform fan, but just show people different ways that they can play some fun games. So many real gamers are gonna scoff at mobile gaming, but the reality has been a lot rosier recently than many would like to admit. Phones and tablets are well powerful enough to compete on a lot of console style experiences, and there's some really interesting things we can talk about performance per watt. And that's where the Razer Edge is an interesting competitor. Razer has built a respectable multimedia tablet with a focus on gaming and is striking out at an aggressive price point. Clearly, this has the base model Steam Deck and the Switch OLED in its sights. The Wi-Fi only version of the Edge is going to retail for $399.99, 400 bucks. The 5G version is climbing up to $599.99 through Verizon. I'm using the 5G version of the Edge right now, though I haven't actually combined it with a Verizon plan, so I've just been mostly using it on Wi-Fi. I think the Edge showcases how we could always use more competition in the mobile gaming space. But I promised you a showdown, so let's get into some comparison points and from a design standpoint, I personally prefer the bulkier build of the Steam Deck. I like having meatier grips to hold onto. It feels more like handling a proper ergonomically built controller. But that isn't the only consideration for mobile gaming, and my hands won't match everyone else's hands. We're talking about those personal preferences, and there are people who might want a thinner or a more streamlined build. Someone who might not like the heft of a deck. You know, someone who is looking at a Switch might be interested in trying some something like this out, which is a little more petite. And the portability is a big perk here. Now, I really won't leave the house with my Steam Deck unless I can pack it. I mean, it, it likes I carry it in the big chunky case. Now, the Edge is roughly the size of a larger phone. I mean, you remember when phablets were all the rage, right? So here, we're gonna take the Edge out of its little Kishi controller here. And if I just hold these up side by side, we're looking at something just kind of fablety. It's a little thicker, but the overall dimensions are kind of more pocketable than I was expecting it would be. The Steam Deck has been incredible for moving a mini PC into a more portable form factor, but it's really not the most casual pack and carry device. But all of my slings, my camera bags, my backpacks, they all have individual pockets for this size gadget, for a smartphone size gadget. And then you just kind of throw in the little controller this is a lot easier to kind of manage on the go. I like the deck a lot more at home. I like the edge a little more when I'm out and about. Looking at controls, the deck is definitely the more complete experience. All the buttons and sticks and triggers, the underside paddles, and these absolutely fantastic track pads. Accounting for nearly every single style of PC game we can play, there is a controller configuration that you can make work. The Edge is just a touchscreen little mini tablet, but it comes with a Razer Kishi, and the Kishi controller is pretty solid. There's a reason why this telescoping controller setup is proving so popular for phones. It's really good hardware, and it packs up really small. Performance is kind of interesting to talk about because of the differences. We're never going to get an oranges to oranges comparison here. The deck is a more traditional mini AMD powered PC. It's the more powerful computer. If you're going to use it at home, mostly plugged in or as a mini PC, then that conversation ends really quickly. Get the Steam Deck. But in terms of mobile computing, I don't find benchmarks tell a complete story. I mean, it's easy to win a performance race if the caveat is pretty much always keep it plugged in. I recently reviewed a Monster Creator laptop. It was an insanely powerful system, but I wouldn't call it mobile. You couldn't really use it unless it was plugged in with a big brick. We're gonna detail a little bit more gaming performance, but I also wanna still kind of wrap up some of the hardware conversations here. One of the most immediate hardware differences is gonna be the display. The deck has a 60 Hertz 720p LCD. It's fine. I like it. It's a good screen. But the Edge has a 1080p OLED at up to 144 hertz refresh, and it's just better. <laughs> I don't think folks are even really going to use the higher refresh as much just because of how games are actually processed on mobile gear. But better contrast, better detail, it's just a nicer screen to look at. And I'll also give the screen responsiveness edge to the Edge. That kind of came out kind of funny. Um, no, it's an Android tablet, so everything is really fluid, how you're typing on the keyboard. The Steam Deck feels a little pokey when you're trying to tap away on that keyboard and you're waiting for the vibration response to recognize the input. But before we leave the displays, I think there's a fun debate to be had over aspect ratio, and I'm going to ask for some comments down below. My hypothesis, 
I think gamers, the 16 by 10 aspect ratio of the deck makes more sense for more titles and older games and emulation. Do I have that wrong? Is there an argument for a more cinema-wide aspect ratio on a portable console? Share some thoughts, get into some respectful debates down below. I'm curious what folks' feelings are, and you should smash that bell icon when you're on the way down to leave your hot takes. Now, considering the designs of each, we've got forward-facing speakers on the Steam Deck and we've got vented speakers, but through the Kishi, they kind of get routed back to your face. The speaker battle was a little closer than I was expecting. <laughs> But for the design of each of these bad boys, the ports on the Steam Deck are just more useful. They're just easier to use. On the Kishi controller, we have a USB-C charging pass-through port and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that's really handy. But I really wish the Edge had its headphone jack built directly into the tablet. And after having played with phones like the ROG, dual USB-C ports really would have been appreciated for getting video output. On the Steam Deck, we can easily plug in headphones and other accessories through the USB PC port if you want to connect it to a dock or you just want to plug in a monitor or portable display or a wearable headset directly through this USB-C. It's so quick turning a Steam Deck into a more traditional TV-based console if you want to set that up. The Edge does support video output but not through this controller's USB-C port so you have to take the Edge out of the Kishi but then you don't have a headphone jack and you lose your sort of side-mounted controller. For how much I've liked this hardware it's one of those weird usability bummers. The Edge is so handy as a little media streaming tablet, you can just use it as a mini screen if you don't need the controller, but then you can't use the same headphones that you might use while you're gaming. Now, the Steam Deck is not modular, you can't make this any smaller if you want to, but all of the ports just work. It, it just seems easier. You don't have to plan when I take the controllers off, I also need to have a headphone dongle. Now, this probably won't be a concern for more current Steam Deck buyers, but I have one of the very first decks built and shipped, and the fan is a little whinier than the fan on the Razer Edge. All well and good. I like what both companies are trying to accomplish here, but this has all just been hardware to this point, and what matters is playing some games. The Steam Deck has surged in popularity with PC gamers and making a big chunk of your PC library more portable. I've been buying games on Steam since the earliest days of the store. I've got a pretty healthy collection of titles to chew through. I don't think it's controversial to say that the story of gaming in Android land is a lot more complicated. We've been getting more console and PC ports. More games are including better controller support, but it takes some digging to get through all of the garbage games on mobile in Google Play, which are there just to wreck your wallet with annoying microtransactions. We can't totally make this a one-to-one -one comparison between the deck and the edge, but where games are properly optimized for ARM SOCs, we see very competitive performance. 1080p gaming at 60 frames per second on titles that feel like last generation or maybe two generation old console games, performance is pretty easy on an Android these days. Bunch of really fun little indie titles and platformers and pixel art, they easily hang out at frame rates which just aren't supported by the Steam Deck or the Switch. I mean, we can talk about precision platformers like Dead Cells or Dandara. I mean, it's really nice having the fluidity of mo movement. And there's been a lot of activity on arcadey titles. You know, two of my recent favorites are Dust and Neon and TMNT Shredder's Revenge through the Netflix catalog. Now, one's a fun twin stick shooter and the other's a classic co-op brawler. And this is where I feel Android is at its strongest. Those kinds of short burst gaming interactions. You can sit down with the Razor Edge and play through something a bit broader. There are a bunch of really fun RPGs. You can really invest some time, but the advantages of going to a portable are you maybe only have five to 15 minutes of gaming that you can really sit down and enjoy and you wanna to get to that gaming as quickly as possible. Playing a couple levels on Baba Is You, that feels like an Android thing to do. It's totally not oranges to oranges, but I love showing off Alien Isolation. If we match display brightness and trying to land similar graphics settings playing for 30 minutes, both devices end up using about 15% of their battery capacity. But the Steam Deck's battery 
is a lot bigger than the Edge's battery. ARM SOCs are delivering really impressive performance per watt advantages. And that game optimization matters. Like getting to the end of a run in Vampire Survivors, I'm keeping a higher frame rate on Android than I am on the Steam Deck. Pardon the interruption, but we gotta take a quick second just to thank this video sponsor, who is you. They're literally helping me keep the lights on here in the Gadget Lab. All of the fine folks over on patreon.com slash somegadgetguy who are directly supporting production for this channel. And of course, all of you who can't financially support all of your favorite content creators, those of you who are making an effort beyond just watching a video, you're sharing on social media, on Reddit, through Discord servers, we will not be able to continue making new videos for you to watch if you aren't supporting them. We never want support to feel like a burden, so if you have the means, I would love for you to check out the Patreon community. Early access for videos, you get to stream videos in 4K without ads or interruptions. I'm posting more written content there, camera deep dives, production diaries. We have our own private Discord, and it's just a really fun collection of tech geeks to get into lively conversations and spirited debates. That community can be found, once again, at patreon.com slash some gadget guy, but I greatly appreciate any effort someone might make in trying to help broaden the tech conversation. Anything we can do to expand beyond just passively consuming what the YouTube algorithm says is already popular. Thank you for all the support. I've got some really fun things planned, not only for this channel, but for this whole little growing community. So stay tuned. I think it's gonna be pretty good times. And now let's, let's get back to the rest of the video. Funnily though, I mean, at least I think it's kind of funny. The deck is way better at standby battery life. You know, when you turn the screen off on the edge, that's it. You just turned off the screen. It's still doing all of that Android stuff in the background. It's running all of those processes. It took me about a day to kind of grok that. I'd come back a couple times to see that the Edge's battery life was way lower than when I set it down. The DeX low power mode is just a champ compared to not only laptops, but also modern consumer tablets. Now, the breadth of the Steam Deck's compatibility can't be overstated here, but I don't think it's a tremendous challenge to find a huge number of fun games to play natively on Android. You might not always be able to find the exact title that you wanna play from your PC, but you can often find some really fun analogous games if you do a little digging. You don't have to jump through those hoops on the Steam Deck. But the other side of this conversation is emulation and game streaming. The deck is gonna pull away for emulation where we can even manage to get some PS3 titles running at acceptable average frame rates. But game streaming is the great equalizer. It matters way less what you play on, my Game Pass subscription is the same on a Steam Deck as it is on the Edge, as it is on a phone, as it is on a tablet, or even an underpowered Celeron mini PC, because that's actually my dirty little secret. When I'm playing at home, I'll often go to Game Pass instead of playing directly on the deck because it helps pad out my Steam Deck's battery life. This segment of portable gaming is getting blown wide open, where the Switch was basically indomitable for years, we're now arriving at cost-effective competition. Now, Valve also has an incentive to sell a Steam Deck at really low margins to encourage more software sales, but the Razer Edge can't make that same play. It's not like Razer gets a cut of every Android game you buy. Manufacturers have to play some different component pros and cons, but we're getting closer and closer to a straight up price fight. Of course, the higher price premium for including the magical 5G, but base model to base model, this is a pretty close fight. I gotta pin this down. It wouldn't be a fun showdown if there weren't some kind of conclusion here. I think the Steam Deck makes more sense as the dedicated gaming solution, but the Edge wins some fights as the broader multimedia entertainment device. Getting into the Steam store, buying some games and playing those games, Steam Deck, that is a really great first party vertical solution. If you're a little bit more flexible, you're a little bit more on the go and travel and pack weight is a concern, then the Edge comes in with an entertainment solution that takes some of the burden off of your phone. Especially just being able to install any other Android apps. You wanna use this as like a video calling solution and also watch some Netflix on it. Android's gonna be a little easier to get all that stuff up and running than going into the desktop mode and installing software through the Linux environment. And here's 
here's my second prediction. We had the first prediction on screen aspect ratio. So here's my second prediction. I expect that folks watching the videos like these will be inclined to like the deck and the PC based consoles better. But to that point, I think it's important that we really critically examine what's going on with the market right now. And I think it's a little silly to ignore mini gaming tablets and where Android is starting to bring some better experiences to mobile gamers. Techies and gamers get so hyper focused on what these things can't do that they sometimes miss all the fun things they can do. I think the Razer Edge demonstrates well how much room there is to enter the hardware market. And if we're going to put pressure on Valve and Nintendo, we want better competition to make better gaming experiences. I don't think we're gonna put much pressure on those companies going to super boutique thousand dollar mini gaming PCs. We need to find those opportunities where we're competing on a, on a closer price to performance. Because at the end of all of this, these are luxuries. I mean, we can play games on phones. We can play games on computers. It's a luxury to own a device that specializes on the games. And thankfully these days, we don't need to spend a lot to have a great experience playing some fun games. And that's where we're gonna put a pin in this video right here. Thanks so much for watching. Please drop some comments down below uh, on both of those questions. I'm really curious to kind of figure out what some of my audience thoughts are. As always, thanks so much for watching, sharing, subscribing. All the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. Those of you clicking on links in the description down below, if you're hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or if you're joining the list of names, scrolling by on your screen, from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch. Not so much on the Facebooks or the Instagrams, but I will catch you all on the next video.